welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana <coughs> विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया in this second course we focus on the three types of samasas namely avyayi bhav bahuvrihi and dvandva in that particular sequence before studying each of these types of samasas in sanskrit we studied the general theoretical background of compounding we studied the samartha theory this theory is stated by panini in his own grammar ashtadhyayi in the sutra samartha padavidhi this theory is later elaborately explained in the commentatorial tradition of the paninian grammar notable amongst them is the vyakarana mahabhashya composed by patanjali in the 2nd century ce there is in fact a separate chapter devoted only to this particular sutra which is traditionally known as samarthanika we refer to this particular text and we studied the important points stated therein and we said that the word samartha is explained by patanjali in four ways samprekshitarth sambaddhartha sangatarth and samsrishtarth and then patanjali has said that vyapeksha and ekarthi bhav are the two types of the state of being samartha and vyapeksha is explained by sambaddhartha and samprekshitartha where two meanings are tied together or they are seen together however they do retain their independent status and the ekarthi bhav kind of state of being samartha is explained by sangatarth and samsrishtarth where two meanings as well as words are going together in fact they are merging into one unit patanjali has also given explanation of these which we have studied before the paninian grammatical tradition has also explained the word samartha as 
samaha arthaha which we have also studied before the theory of compounding we said is based on the theory of karaka which brings about the sentential meaning a four as we said that sentence is the input for the process of compounding because the interrelated padas they are capable of expressing the interrelated meanings only when they are part of a sentence when there is a sentential context and so sentence is the input and after the process is over the output generated is in the form of a nominal root or a pratipadika and this pratipadika further becomes an input for the sentence we then studied the process of derivation of the compound or the samasa in this process we also studied the concept of nitya samasa and also anitya samasa or vaikalpika samasa in this context we also studied laukika vigraha and alaukika vigraha laukika vigraha is the dissolution of the compound using the words that are used in the usage by the speakers alaukika vigraha corresponds to the laukika vigraha but it is the technical representation of the laukika vigraha in grammatical terms and we said that it is here that the process of compounding begins and then we keep on doing the further processing which involves the purva pada nirdharana which involves the addition of the samasanta pratyaya as well as the purva pada karya as well as the uttara pada karya and then some morphological operations as well as the phonological operations and then the varna karya happens and then the formal output in the form of a pratipadika is ready we also say that we also have accent which is a very very important feature of paninian grammar and it is this accent which also plays an important role in the process of compounding we generally apply the rules of accent towards the end of the process and it is this particular topic that we shall be dealing with in the present lecture the swara karya the operations related to the accent it is to be noted that the compositionality in paninian grammar functions at three levels there are bigger units which are made up of smaller units and the bigger units can be further made to be smaller units and further bigger units can be constructed now this compositionality functions at three levels namely artha shabda and swara the important feature of this compositionality is that the compositionality at all these three levels has one to one correspondence with each other what it means is that one unit of artha corresponds with one unit of shabda and swara similarly division of artha in that one unit corresponds to the division in shabda as well as swara and so also generation 
which is in correspondence. This is a very fundamental feature of accent in Paninian grammar as well as compositionality. So, Vakya Swara is achieved by adding the Padaswaras together. If we have one Vakya or Vakya 1, then it is composed of some Padas. These Padas are having some meaning. The Vakya also has some meaning, namely Vakyartha. So, Vakyartha 1 corresponds with Vakya 1, which corresponds with Vakya Swara 1. Now, Vakyartha is made up of three Padarthas. Padartha 1 plus Padartha 2 plus Padartha 3. This corresponds with the Vakya being made up of three Padas, Pada 1, Pada 2 and Pada 3. Similarly, in Swara, Vakya Swara 1 is made up of Pada Swara 1 plus Pada Swara 2 plus Pada Swara 3. Now, the Padarthas, they are made up of the Prakrityartha and the Pratyayartha. So, Padartha 1 is made up of Prakrityartha 1 plus Pratyayartha 1. Padartha 2 is made up of Prakrityartha 2 plus Pratyayartha 2. And Padartha 3 is made up of Prakrityartha 3 plus Pratyayartha 3. In correspondence with this, Pada 1 is made up of Prakriti 1 plus Pratyaya 1. Pada 2 is made up of Prakriti 2 plus Pratyaya 2. Pada 3 is made up of Prakriti 3 plus Pratyaya 3. And in correspondence with this, Pada Swara 1 is made up of Prakriti Swara 1 plus Pratyaya Swara 1. Pada Swara 2 is made up of Prakriti Swara 2 plus Pratyaya Swara 2. And Pada Swara 3 is made up of Prakriti Swara 3 plus Pratyaya Swara 3. Now, when Pada Swara is shown to be made up of Prakriti Swara and Pratyaya Swara, we have used blue color for the plus sign. This blue color indicates that this addition is what is ultimately exclusively the Pada level existence and in arriving at the Vakya Swara and explaining the Vakya Swara, we have used the red color for the plus signs indicating that this is that additional meaning, this is that co-occurrence meaning which is exclusively considered to be the existence of the Vakya at all the three levels, be it Vakyaratha, be it Vakya, be it Vakya Swara. Right now we are focused on Swara, so we say these things about Swara. Vakya Swara is made up of Pada Swaras and Pada Swara is made up of Prakriti Swara and Pratyaya Swara. Let us take some examples. So, here we have a sentence. Which is set 1. And in this set, we have 6 sentences. Gramam gachati ramaha, shalam gachati ramaha, and gramam gachati mohanaha. Shalam Gachati Mohanaha, Shalam Pashyati Ramaha, and Gramam Pashyati Mohanaha. And there are certain signs, certain marks over the letters as well as under the letters. For example, in the first sentence, Gramam Gachati Ramaha, 
we see a vertical bar on top of this mum and a horizontal bar below ra now it is important to remember that according to the rules of paninian grammar there are accents which are also derived rule based and that we shall explain in a while what is important over here is that these accents they are the sentential accents and they are composed of the accents of the respective padas as these three sentences are constructed out of the three padas and these three padas making one sentence corresponds with the three padarthas making one vakyartha which is linked to one vakya now if we look look at the prakriti pratyaya swara which is part of these sentences we see that grama has got a particular accent gama also has got an accent rama shala mohana and drusha all of them they have got particular accent these are all the prakritis used in these six sentences whereas am a ti and sa are the pratyayas which are used in these six sentences now there is a certain accent marking scheme that is followed over here which is generally followed in the rigvedic accent marking scheme scheme there are three major accents udatta anudatta and swarita udatta is marked with no sign anudatta is marked with a horizontal bar below and swarita is marked with a vertical bar on top of the letter each and every word consists of at least one udatta and then the remaining vowels they become anudatta udatta anudatta and swarita these are the features of only vowels and they are not the features of consonants now when one vowel becomes udatta the remaining vowels become anudatta now the anudatta which precedes an udatta is marked with a horizontal bar below that letter and an anudatta which follows an udatta is marked with a vertical bar on top of the letter so for example in grama which is a pratipadika we see that this is unmarked gra is unmarked and therefore this can be an udatta now m is marked with a vertical bar on top so this is actually an anudatta but because it follows an udatta therefore it is marked with a vertical bar on top in gama there is only one vowel and it is not marked with any of the signs and therefore we can safely say that gama has got one udatta in rama there is m which is not marked therefore we can say that this m is udatta obviously this ra is anudatta and therefore it is shown with a horizontal bar below in shala sha is shown without any sign so this is an udatta and so this a is an anudatta but because it follows an udatta so it is marked with a vertical bar on top which is a an indication of a swarita now in mohana the final a is considered to be udatta and 
therefore both the previous vowels they are marked with the horizontal bar below it indicating that they are anudattas drisha once again has got one udatta which is obviously unmarked in am a and t they are uh, they are all anudattas and therefore they are marked with the horizontal bar below them s so is unmarked but because it is a consonant it does not have the feature of accent now these are the prakriti pratyaya swaras and we have explained each prakriti and pratyaya and its accent in detail now when we join these prakritis and these pratyayas we get the padas and in the process the accents of the prakriti and the accents of the pratyaya they also get joined together and then they evolve the swara or the accent of the pada which is of this particular kind so grama plus am and here we have the swara sandhi taking place where a and a is merged into a by the sutra ami purvaha and now because both of them are anudatta so the resultant a is also shown to be anudatta but because it is following an udatta in a gra therefore it is again shown as swarita in gama plus a plus t a and t they both are anudattas obviously the udatta retains itself and in the form gachati g is udatta whereas the remaining both are anudatta now this anudatta which comes immediately after an udatta is marked with a vertical bar on top indicating that it is a swarita even though this t is not marked by any other sign this is an anudatta as we know and this anudatta is left unmarked primarily because it follows previous anudatta which has attained the status of swarita in ramaha we don't have to worry too much because s does not have any swara in shalam the same process applies which applied also in gramam in mohanaha also there is nothing different that is happening and in drisha plus a plus t same process as in gachati happens is happening this is how the word accent is generated from the prakriti and pratyaya accents and then this padaswara gives rise to the vakya swara now the vakya swara is made up in this particular manner so we have grama plus am and we it becomes gramam in gachati we have gama plus a plus t and so gachati has got the initial vowel being udat and the remaining vowels are anudat now when we write gramam gachati ramaha together as a sentence we then can write the elements in a particular manner so grabam gachati ramaha has got gra unmarked indicating that it is udat this is ma is anudat but it is following an udat therefore it becomes a swarita gachati in the history that we know has got only two anudattas and this a is udat however as a sentential accent when this gachati precedes a subantha then it loses all the udatta accents and therefore gachati is marked with all the anudatta 
accents. In fact, it will be unmarked indicating that it has got all three anudattas. All of them, they follow this svarita and so they are unmarked. But when gachati is written at the beginning of the sentence, gachati gramam ramaha, the original historical accent of gachati over here is retained and this g is shown to be udat. Same is the case with gachati ramo gramam and same thing will happen over here as well. Similarly, the Svarakarya will also happen in Samasa. In Paninian grammar, such compositionality also works in the process of compounding. Accents of constituents are taken into account and in the process of merging, only one of them is retained as the accent of the newly merged or newly formed unit. By default, the accent of the semantic head should be retained, but this is followed loosely. There are se several exceptions where the semantic non-head also retains the accent. We have a very general sutra, Samasasya, 6.1.223, meaning the final vowel in the compound is accented. This is the by default rule. This is also the Adhikara Sutra. It governs the entire 6.2, which means that the accent on compounds is stated in 6.2 in the Ashtadhyayi. Let us take an example. So we have Ramaha, Krishnaha, Cha. This is the Laukika Vigraha Vakya. And then we transform it into the Alaukika Vigraha Vakya in this particular manner. Rama plus Su plus Krishna plus Su. Rama has got an Udatta at the end. So Ra is Anudatta marked with a horizontal bar below. Krishna is marked with an Udatta in the initial position. So this is, so second vowel is Anudatta which is marked as a Svarita. So now, this accent continues, then we apply the further process and so we derive the Samasa form Ramakrishna and now both these accents, they go away and a new accent of this newly merged unit is arises and that is because of the general sutra samasasya which is the final vowel which gets accented. In the Bahuvrihi, however, the Purvapada retains its accent. The sutra is Bahuvrihau Prakritya Purvapadam 621 in the Ashtadhyayi which means that in the Bahuvrihi compound, the Purvapada remains by its original or earlier accent. In the Bahuvrihi compound, the accent of the Purvapada is retained as the accent of the newly formed Bahuvrihi compound. Here is an example. Meaning one who loves the world Priyam, Vishpam, Yasyasaha and we have accent marks in the following manner. In Priyam we have Pri having the Udatta. So this here is Anudatta but because it follows an Udatta so this Anudatta is marked as Svarita. In Vishpam V is Udatta and those, so this vowel is Anudatta but because it follows an Udatta Therefore, it is marked as a Svarita with a vertical bar on top of the letter. Now, we transform this Laukika Vigraha into the Alaukika Vigraha Vakya. 
So we have Priya plus Su plus Vishwa plus Su with the accent marks and then we apply Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho and then we get Priya plus zero plus Vishwa plus zero. And now since this is a Bahuvrihi compound, we apply 621 Bahuvrihau Prakritya Purvapadam and so we get the word Priya Vishwa with the initial vowel accented which is what happens in Priya. So in this case, the accent of one of the constituents, in this case the first member of the compound, is retained to be the accent of the entire compound, the newly formed unit. In the previous case, the accents of both constituents did not were not retained and a new accent of the compound was stated. To summarize, the accent is a very important feature noted down by Paninian grammar on minute parts of speech. The accent compositionality corresponds with that of meaning and the word form. The newly derived compound form gets one accent. This is one of the constituent accent in many cases, but in many cases it is something new, indicating the non-compositional nature of the compound. So to summarize once again, given XAX plus YAY as the accent input, the outputs could be described as XYAX or XYAY where A is retained, X is retained as well as Y is retained. But sometimes it so happens that neither X nor Y is retained and an, a totally different accent in the form of Z arises and is there on the compound. These are the texts referred to. Thank you.